What's up YouTube? I'm geeking out and I'm coming at you guys with a brand new video. This video is going to be a top 10 picks for me for the villain for a new Batman movie. I know we're going to have a new Batman movie coming at us at some point and these are the top 10 picks I would want to see for a Batman movie. Number 10, Bane. We've seen Bane quite a few times. That's why he's uh, ranking in just at number 10. Barely makes the list. But because he's such a great villain, and also because for me, I don't feel like we've seen Bane to his true potential played out yet. In the first time incarnation we saw, we really saw the physical presence. In the second, they focused more on the, uh, the, the, the strategist of Bane. I would like to see a Bane where the, both of those are combined. That huge, hulking... Uh, just uh, beyond reality physical presence, but then also that uh, genius mastermind that we saw played out in The Dark Knight Rises. I'd like to see just a melding of those two, just like we see in the comics. That would be great. And so for that reason, that's why I have Bane picked as my number 10 pick. For me, number 9 should be no surprise, the Joker. Now you guys might be surprised that he ranks so low, but honestly... We've seen the Joker played out so many times, and I personally, I love every incarnation that we've seen of the Joker, from Jack Nicholson Joker uh, all the way to Jared Leto's Joker. I have enjoyed each one of them for, for different reasons. Um, they've all been great. They're all unique, and they're all special, but I love them all. And then I know we've got Joaquin Phoenix's Joker origin movie that's going to be coming. I'm super excited for that. Glad to see it. Glad that they're making that. That looks uh, really intriguing and really interesting. I can't wait for it. But then also we've been told that we're going to be getting a Joker Harley Quinn movie with Jared Leto and Margot Robbie. So we've got plenty of Joker coming down the pike. And even with that Jared Leto and Margot Robbie uh, Joker one that's supposed to be coming, you know, I, I fully expect to see Batman at least make an appearance in that just because it's still connected into that universe and again hoping that it's Ben Affleck because he is my favorite Batman so for that reason that's why Joker is so low on my list but again I would not be upset at all if we got another Batman movie with the Joker as the villain because he's such a great villain number eight I would have to say is Deathstroke. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I saw that Justice League post credit scene with Deathstroke showing up, talking to Lex Luthor, the hints at the Legion of Doom, man, that was exciting for me. I loved that. That was great. And for that reason, just alone, just getting that hype, and just because of how cool of a character Deathstroke is, you guys know how awesome he is, and how big of a threat that he can be to someone like Batman. I know he started off as a Teen Titans villain, but he has, you know, grown to be so much more. And we've seen him played out on the Arrowverse, but I would really like to see him in the cinematic universe. And I think a great start for that would be a a Batman movie. That would be a great place for him. He's the physical presence. He's the He can challenge Batman on a mental level as well. So for me, my number eight pick would definitely be Deathstroke. Now, number seven might throw you guys. It's Maxi Zeus. For those of you who don't know who this is, Maxi Zeus. Now, we saw him played out in the Batman animated series, which is where I first saw him and took a, an interest in him. But Maxi Zeus is really an interesting character because, now you guys know that with there are two comic book characters that both are very easily defined by their villain uh, roster, by their rogues gallery. And one is Batman for DC, and the other is Spider-Man for Marvel. Both of them have great rogues galleries. And for me, Maxi Zeus is kind of Batman's Mysterio, if you want to put it that way. Because he's really flashy, really dramatic, um, and he's got all the tech and the technology, uh, kind of like a Mysterio does. So that's kind of how I've always viewed him. And I know they're going to be using Mysterio um, in the sequel to Homecoming for Spider-Man. And that kind of got me thinking about Maxi Zeus and how cool of a character he is and how interesting it would be to see someone like that who is a threat to Gotham but 
um, psychologically damaged character as well. How cool it would be seeing Batman go up against someone like that who, you know, w with all of those things, who he is. Number six, Hush. Now, if you guys know Hush, if you know the Hush storyline in the comics and everything, you know how cool and how neat of a character Hush is. This guy is no joke. And there's a lot of things that they could do with this. Honestly, I would not be surprised at all. It would not be that much of a stretch to me to see them doing a whole trilogy with Hush as the central villain. And again, if you know that, that story arc, you, you know, you, you could probably see that too. You could think about it and be like, yeah, I could actually see them getting a trilogy out of that with all the villains and everything that they used and him at the core. But even if they just use the fact of him taking over Bruce Wayne's persona and uh, stealing his identity and everything, that would be really cool. We, that's something we've never seen before. And that would be really interesting. But he doesn't make my top five. He makes number six. So we're going to get into the top five for my picks. And coming in at number five is Man Bat. Now, I have loved this character ever since Batman the Animated Series. You guys are going to hear me reference Batman the Animated Series a couple times, especially when I'm talking about Batman, because I love that series so much, and I know many of you do too. But that first episode where we see Man Bat, such a great episode, and just everything that they do in that, it's so perfect. But the character of Man Bat, it's not something that not someone that many people know or would recognize but still just um just who he is and, and kind of what happened to him it's it, the accident it's, it's a little bit of an accident he's not really intending to be a villain but you know he's working on this you know these experiments and stuff and gets transformed into man bat and, you know, I think it would be an interesting character for them to use, and I think it would be interesting because you could put a real horror element and a horror spin on this, kind of a Batman horror movie, so I think that would be really, really cool. Number four, I have to say, would be Black Mask. Black Mask is an awesome character, uh, not so much because of the uh, physical presence that he would impose on Batman, but just his mind and his intellect and who he is. This is not somebody that you want to mess with. And again, kind of referencing going back to the rogues gallery and the comparisons between Batman and Spider-Man, Black Mask is, is Batman's kingpin. Somebody that you do not want to underestimate. Somebody that you do not want to go up against. And a Black Mask movie would be really cool, especially if Ben Affleck does not come back which again is more more likely than not that he will not be coming back returning for Batman but again anything's possible but if he doesn't and they end up going with more of an origin type story for Batman then Black Mask would be a really cool character and a very easy character to do for an origin story for Batman that would be really neat to see him going up against this organization and uh, tackling Black Mask. Number three for me, Jason Todd or the Red Hood. Now, this is a no-brainer to me because if we do get Ben Affleck back again as Batman, which again, I hope so much that we do because he is my favorite Batman. Uh, that's my personal opinion. I've loved the portrayal that he has given as Batman. And so I would like to see him at least do one standalone Batman movie. And if he did decide to do that, to me it's a no-brainer. It's Jason Todd. Jason Todd, Red Hood, we've already seen that Robin was in this universe. We've seen that there was a Robin. Uh, we haven't gotten the full story, but it would be so easy to just do the Red Hood. This is someone that is that knows Batman on a close, personal level. So that ups the stakes right there. The story, uh, the storyline, everything that you could do could be so compelling on a personal, emotional level. And even, you know, you could do some flashbacks that would be really cool too, showing the early years and everything. And uh, maybe showing some glimpses of Robin before 
uh, the tragedy struck. And then you go in and you have Red Hood um, as your villain. But man, that would be awesome to see him in a live action movie. All right, so my number two pick, The Court of Owls. Yeah, I know, that's a little bit of cheating because it's not just one character, it's an organization, but The Court of Owls, wow. What a threat to Batman. And the way that they did that in the comics and everything and how that played out, just seeing that they were there and were responsible for his parents' death. I mean, talk about putting it on an emotional and a personal level. The Court of Owls. You can't beat that right there. That would be awesome to see. And then, of course, if you're bringing in the Court of Owls, it's very you'd, you'd obviously would bring in Talon, too, so there's your physical presence. But just having Batman going up against this organization that he has not known about the entire time and has just been in the shadows orchestrating everything and finding out they're behind everything, even his parents' death. What a movie. Oh, wow, what a movie. How great would that be, guys, to see something like that played out on the big screen? So, that's my number two pick. You're wondering what beat it out? Clayface. You guys might be thinking, Clayface? How is Clayface any better? Well, for me, Clayface is better because of who he is. Now, let me explain this. So you've got this movie, and it's a Batman movie. I would love to see a Batman movie that really gets into the psychological thriller aspect of Batman. Explore the fact that he is the world's greatest detective. And you're thinking, how are you doing that with Clayface? Well, if you know who Clayface is, you know that this is a guy who can transform and become anyone he wants to be. So picture this. Picture a movie that is basically a psychological thriller at its core, kind of a Silence of the Lambs type feel. And you've got all these murders that are being committed, and the GCPD, Gordon, none of these guys can figure it out. They know that all these murders are being committed, and they think that maybe it's all being done by one guy, but there's no connections whatsoever. They're all unique. They're all different, and they all report, all the eyewitnesses report seeing somebody completely different. And Gordon needs help with this, so who does he call? Of course, he calls Batman. And Batman comes in, and he's looking at all of this, and of course we know how psychologically damaged and everything that Batman is, but he is the world's greatest detective, and only he is the one that can put all the pieces together and figure out that, yes, this is one guy, and he figures it out, and come to find out it was this used-to-be struggling actor, confronts him, and he comes face to face with Clayface. So you've got the the mental aspect there of being the world's greatest detective. But then if you see, I mean, Clayface is massive. So when it comes to the final confrontation and you see this guy and a huge match and a huge physical threat to Batman, I think it would just be an awesome, compelling, great movie that explores all the different aspects of Batman things we haven't seen before. But that's my top 10 list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for stopping in.